Heading into the offseason, there's a lot of positions the Steelers are obviously going to have to address, and those are the obvious. But one position that is definitely a huge question mark and kind of going under the radar is the Steelers' backup quarterback position. The reason being is because before Con and company make any restructures, before they make any cap casualties, before they make any moves as for agency inches closer and closer, we only have two quarterbacks under contract for the 2023 season as of now. Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky. But when you look at Mitch's contract and his cap it this year, it's ten point six million for a backup, which yeah. is a little hefty for someone that came in as the uh, as the starter last year, then got benched pretty much three and a half games in. Yeah, and honestly, when he stepped in, he had one solid performance versus the Bucks, but other than that, Mitch. Mitch isn't a very confident backup. So let me just say that. No. And for that cap hit, it's not worth bringing him back. No, it's not. So the Steelers are kind of handcuffed, and they're kind of uh, they're back into a corner a little bit because you could say, well, just, just do a pay cut, just restructure. The problem is Mitch is only under contract for one more year. If you restructure his contract, you're pushing money back. So you're creating more dead cap for the future with him not under contract. So what do the Steelers do? Do they keep him under his current cap hit? Do they restructure and take some of the dead cap next year just to ensure they have a backup quarterback for Kenny? Or do they just flat out cut him and save over $8 million and only suffer 2.6 in dead cap, which isn't really that bad? No, it's not. Honestly, with that situation, it's honestly the best case scenario for the Steelers. Yes. Because Mitch ain't worth 10 points. No backup is worth no. 10 points. I don't give a crap who it is. No. And we could really save $8 million right now. The Steelers need it. They, they don't have a lot of cap, but as we've seen in, in the past, we trust Khan and company to just finesse the cap and get us out of this corner again. We've been in worse situations. And there's a lot of restructures. There's a lot of guys that could take pay cuts. You guys already know the names. Watt, Hayward, maybe Minka, maybe Deontay. A lot of names out there. Maybe some of the line. So, the Steelers got ways to make moves to create cap. But Mitch is going to be one of the biggest question marks because of his cap hit. But also, if we cut him, we have no backup to Kenny. So, what do the Steelers do? Yeah, and I think it's it's pretty much sealed and done for that Mitch. Not Mitch. Uh, Mason. Mitch Rudolph is done for. Yes, because. He has no interest in coming back. No. And, it's, and I don't. we don't blame can, him. Can you honestly blame the guy? And the predicaments that he was in since being drafted by the Steelers, having to step in for Ben when Ben suffered that season-ending elbow injury. Yeah. And the, the debacle season he had in the Miles Garrett situation. Yeah. The and whole... everything else, not even getting a true opportunity to be the starting quarterback once again. Yes. And don't give us that 2019 bull crap because we know that without a shadow of a doubt, with Ben coming back, there was no way Mason was going to get a fair shot at being a starter. And the one time he actually had a fair shot, they brought in a first-round bum and Kenny Pickett. Two guys that are easily going to be way ahead and of him in the And looking at the situation chart. with Mitch, it was probably, now I understand you can't predict the future. No. It's very hard to do so. But looking back at it, they were better off giving Mason, considering they paid him $5 million to sit on the bench, yes. to have him take that role and be the fill-in guy and give him the other opportunity. Yeah. If what, he failed, you got Kenny. Yeah, because what they did with Mitch, they should have just done with Mason. It would have been much easier, and honestly, we probably would have succeeded a little more. And here at we are. At the, at, at the start of the season, but here we are now. And here we are. And, and let's not forget, they drafted a quarterback in Chris Oladukin in the seventh round last year, a guy that they didn't even keep. The guy the guy didn't even play any part in preseason, got very little team reps in, in, in training camp last year. So it's like with what Mason, with what happened with Mason, that could have been Oladukin sitting on the bench, being the third stringer, so, not playing one So bit. now what do the Steelers do? They're kind of back in the corner with Mitch. Do they do what we discussed at the start of this video? Do they cut him and bring in someone? Do, does Mason actually come back? Does he come back for a backup role? Does Do the Steelers bring back a guy like Josh Dobbs, which wouldn't be the first time, and that's actually a favorable decision in my book. Do they go out and grab a veteran guy as a me- to play the backup, but also as a mentor for Kenny? And There's, there's a handful of guys out there. There's Jacoby Brissett who has no issue being a backup, a mentor, a guy like Teddy Bridgewater that has no problem being yep. a backup and a mentor. You know, guys like that that are confident in those roles. Yeah, they could bring in veteran guys to play as a mentor role for Kenny and absolutely be fine 
playing the backup and could be decent fill-ins. God forbid anything happens. But the Mitch, wood. Mitch Trubisky, he doesn't the, – that vibe doesn't come off of him to me. Because he even said – and this is nothing against the Steelers. This is just him saying – Mitch said that he wished he didn't jump to conclusions at the start of Frey until last year. He wished he went through all his options instead of just picking with the Steelers. Yeah. I don't think that's a shot. The Steelers, that's just him saying, man, I mean, I could have just weighed my options, and now he could be doing that again. He might request his uh, release. I don't know. We don't know. He, he may very well still want to start in the NFL. Yeah. Now we all know that he's not a starter quality. No, 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 but, no. But he still thinks he is, and he may want to explore that option once again. But concerning the, the amount of quarterback needy teams at yeah. the moment. But the Steelers cutting Mitch for eight million is a very easy decision. But they, they're just stuck because they don't have any other quarterback under contract behind Kenny. So what do they do? Do they sign someone, then cut Mitch? Do they have a backup plan? Do they draft a guy? But I think if they would have to draft a guy, it would have to be someone to play third stringer. Because you're still gonna need a backup for Kenny going into the draft just to fill depth. And the Steelers love three and four quarterbacks in training camp. So there's no doubt in my mind the Steelers are going to make moves at quarterback uh, for depth reasons, for backup reasons. But the biggest question mark right now is just what do they do with Mitch? Because they're, they're really stuck here. Unless they bring someone in and then cut Mitch, which would be a probably favorable decision for yeah. cap reasons. Yeah. But I don't know. The Steelers are kind of handcuffed right now when it comes to that position. Uh, unless, of course, like we said, Mason comes back. But I don't think any of us are anticipating that. No, I don't see that happening. I see him uh, exploring his options, going to whoever that could give him the true opportunity that the Steelers truly never gave him. Right. So we don't know what's going to happen to the Steelers' backup quarterback position, but it's definitely a huge question mark and something that's flying under the radar a little bit when it comes to needs because it's kind of necessary. It really is, especially depending on what the Steelers do to the O-line and knowing Kenny's two concussions last year. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need a backup quarterback, but keeping Mitch at this current pay cut is not a rational decision. Cutting him for $8 million is, but then you're asked, who's Kenny's backup? We shall see as, as, as time will answer those questions. Time will tell. We're only inching closer to March and the free agency period where a lot of questions are going to be answered. But this is just speculation a month in advance to see what are the Steelers going to do there because that's one of yeah. those positions they're really going to have to fill unless they 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 do re- restructure Mitch. But, again, I don't think that's a good cap decision. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. But one thing we can say is throughout the entire offseason process, throughout the entire free agency and draft process, we do trust Omar Khan and Andy Waddle to make the right decisions. Waddle is a huge scout name. He's, he has great eyes on scout. We've seen what he did for the Eagles, and we know Omar Khan has gotten us out of worse positions for cap reasons before. So looking forward to what they do, um, but quarterback's definitely going to be one of those you, we're going to have to look at closely. So we'll see what they do. Time will tell. Um, otherwise, let us know you guys' thoughts down below. Who do you think the Steelers' back and quarterback should be? Do you guys have any names out there? What do you think we should do with Mitch? Let us know everything down below. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter at Steel Twins. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Definitely check out SteelyAndrews.com. And see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you later. Peace!